Hi, and welcome to another Red Sky tutorial. In this video, I'll walk you through how we start new projects from scratch using the Shad CN component library and Svelte. Later on, we'll also dive into how you can connect your new front end project to our Restura Quick Start. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is you're going to come to shadcn-svelte.com. Um, as of the recording of this video, September 20th in 2024, this is what ShadCN's uh, homepage looks like when you get here. Uh, first thing we're going to like to do is go to the doc section. We're going to move on down to installation. And when you get in here, because we're making a Svelte project, we're going to go ahead and follow Svelte Kit. All right, so we're really just going to follow exactly what they're telling us to do here for our initial setup of this project. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy it. We, we like to use PNPM here at Red Sky. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste this in here. And I'm just going to change the name of this project to Demo. I'm going to push Enter. Uh, it's going to give us some options here. And I'm going to choose the Skeleton Project. Push Enter. I'm going to say Yes using TypeScript syntax. Push Enter there. And then this is multiple options, so we do use ESLint, and we also do use Prettier for it. These other ones, we, um, well, actually, Svelte 5, we, we do use too. Um, we've been trying to rotate into Svelte 5. Uh, it's about 90% there, almost to full release, so let's go ahead and just say yes to that one. And we're going to push Enter. Perfect. So the next thing we're going to end up doing is I'm just going to go ahead and change directory into the demo one. And once here, I'm going to kind of go into step two here, add Tailwind CSS. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this guy, paste some on in there, push enter. Uh, we're not going to use a typography plugin, so I'm going to say nope. And then, do do do, which uh, package manager do you want to install dependencies with? We're going to say pnpm, and push enter. It's formatting, perfect. We're all set. So let me just kind of clear this up to the top. Um, no, we'll go ahead and just do pm pm install. So I use the alias pn uh, install. I'll just go ahead and get that. Looks like we're already up to date. Let's just hit set up skipped. All right, perfect. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's just open up this code in VS Code. So what I'll do is I'll say code dot, and this should launch it on up here. And there we go. Let me just move, make this full screen. So here we are. Now we got into our project. Now that I got this project up and open, let me just go ahead and create some more space here so we can kind of see, continue seeing the um, the other steps that we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller to follow this along. Oops. There we go. Perfect. Now, going on down here, let's go up set of our paths aliases. So we're going to go into the svelte config.js. We come on in here. We have our config, we have our kit, we have our adapters, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create aliases. And inside here, we're going to do colon, excuse me, quotes, at forward slash star, quotes, space, and then we're going to say our path to our lib file. So we're going to do src, and if we say src, straight to lib, lib. Perfect. So now that we got that set up, we're going to go ahead and run the CLI um, to get the latest for Shad CN Svelte. And in this case, I'm actually just going to go ahead and pull up the terminal inside uh, VS Code. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this guy. And so this is what this is doing on ShadC, and it's kind of setting up the, the styles and the designs and everything that we want. Uh, typically in projects, uh, when we get started, our designer will go ahead and provide us with a typography, styles, everything based on the project. Um, just for this one, though, because it's a quick start, we are going to go ahead and go with default. And then base colors, I'm just going to go with slate. And it says, where is your global CSS file? And we're going to say it's in our source app CSS. And you can see it right here. If we go in source, there's our app.css. So coming back down here, go ahead and push enter. Uh, where is your tailwind config located? Um, and this will be overwritten. So this is at a root of it. We're just going to keep it there. Uh, configure the imports aliases for components. So there that is. We'll just keep going. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Perfect. Now it's kind of gotten our project set up. If we kind of look down here configured the components JSON that was all figured out there 
Um, and yeah, and at this point we can, let me just clear this out. We can start to add in components that we, uh, that we know that we're going to end up using. So let's just keep going with it and let's actually add in this belt button component. Uh, the nice thing about Shad CN is it just makes it super simple to add in, uh, the components and allow us to change it. So I'm going to paste this code in here, do demo PM PM DLX Shad CN, uh, dash felt at latest, and then we're going to add the button. So to go through, it says, are you ready to install the components and dependencies? We're going to say yes. Awesome. At that point, we were uh, successfully installing that. There, we'll clear that out. And now where we can find that component is if we go into our lib, we go down to components, we're going to see our button uh, is felt. And you can see the code all right in here. It just brought it in that simple, and I can make changes to this if need be, based on whatever our project that we're going to be working on needs. So the next thing I would like to do is I'm actually going to want to get this project up and going so we can see it on the browser here. And I think we should actually just go ahead and bring this button component in on uh, on a page and see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do PM PM dev to get the project up and running. And it's going to run on localhost 5174. And I'm just going to go ahead and control click on this, bring it up over here, welcome to Svelte Kit, documentation. So where this is coming from is if we minimize this, we go to our routes and we go to our page that's felt layout. And this is where we're seeing this code coming from. This is how Svelte lays it all out for us. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this just so we can kind of continue with the rest of this um, introduction um, for installation. And let's just go ahead and copy this whole page here and bring this on in. We'll go ahead and bring this on in here. We have a button now that says click me, spell just reran. And if we come back here, we have that button, click me. Perfect. Nice. So now we have our entire uh, Shad CN component library um, implemented in here. We just have our button component. We've gotten the entire quick start up to this point all off of uh, Shad CN's website following along. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, implementing like the services, our service factory, moving on to how we'll connect to Restura at some point, but we are pretty much there. We got the bare bones of our quick start up and going. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our service layer. This is what's going to end up handling kind of all of our API offs to the back end of Restura. Uh, to get started with that, I will go ahead and co collapse my, my file tree here to make it easier for you to see where I'm working from. Inside our source uh, file, we're going to go to open that up, and we're going to go into lib. And inside lib, we're going to create a new directory called services. And inside services, we're going to create a new file called service factory .ts. And inside service factory, we're going to go ahead and create a type called services uh, service types. Type service types and that's going to be equal to an empty object for right now and we're going to get some TypeScript errors but don't worry we'll we'll end up addressing these here by the end of this file uh, after we got that type created we're going to go ahead and create our class class service factory and service factory is going to have a private variable called service map and that's, we're just going to say, yes, we know it's going to be here because we are, we are about to literally create that here. And this is going to be of types, service types. So next thing we'll do is we're going to create an init method. And it's going to be equal to void or type of void. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and grab the this dot service map and create that to an empty object right now. So again, we're going to get some TypeScript errors, but we will clean that up. After that, we are going to create a for loop, and uh, we have to um, assign a key value to the key. So let's go ahead and say let key is going to be key of service types. And inside that, we're going to create a for loop. And it's going to be for key in this.servicemap. And inside there, we're going to say this.servicemap. Oop, if I can spell there, service map. It's going to be equal to key, and we're going to say dot start. Um, again, we're going to get some those TypeScript errors, like I said before. So this is looking looking good so far. Let's step outside this init method, and we're going to create another one called get. And this is going to have some TypeScript decorators. And we're going to say t extends 
key of service type. And inside here, we're going to create a, a param. Well, it's just called service key. And this is going to be equal to T. And let's just go ahead and add another service types there. And this is pretty much there. So it says get T extends key of service types. Service key, we're saying is equal to T. Uh, service types T inside the object we're going to return is this service map with the service key. And so the next thing we, we need to do is come on down here. I did notice that I have a syntax error actually right here. Let's go and fix that up real quick. There we go. Is there any other ones that I'm kind of missing on here? Nope. Cool. This that service map key services service type key of service types. That's where the error is coming from. Service types. Perfect. Coming down here, we will go ahead and assign the service factory to a new service factory. So const service factory is equal to new service factory and then we're going to go ahead and export that default as service factory perfect so again we got some little typescript errors but we'll clean those up here in just a second the next file that we need to create is actually going to be called a service.ts so still inside our services file we're going to go do new file and say service.ts and then inside this one, we're going to do export class service. And this is going to be public start method for us. So now if we come back over to service factory, this guy um, is almost there. The last thing that we need to do is uh, let's actually give this some data. Um, with all of our projects, most of them always have something to do with users logging in. So let's go ahead and create a user service. So we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it user. And inside that user folder, we're going to go and create a service class called user service.ts. I'm going to push enter there. And then inside here, we're going to say export default class user service. And this is going to extends service. And then let's go ahead and just import that real quick. There we go. And there we are. We have our first user service. In a little bit here, we'll go ahead and add our first methods in here and kind of show you how that works. But to finish up this, we're going to go to the service factory. And inside here, we're going to go and import our user service. So user service is going to be equal to user service. And down here, we're going to go ahead and initialize that. So user service is equals to new user service. And I'm just going to go and do it prettier to make it look nice. Uh, and then let's go ahead and import this. So import user service there. Um, not the type. We want to actually just import user service from there. And there we go. That is how we set up our service factory. Um, the, uh, the one thing that we are missing is actually starting the service factory when our project starts running. So for us to be able to do that, what we're going to need to do is we are going to go to the source of our project. Here, let me just collapse this again. And inside source, we're going to create a file called new file, and it's going to be called hooks.client.ts. And then inside hooks.clientts, we are going to go service factory.init. And we're going to actually call that method. And you can see Copilot's doing a wonderful job by auto filling this out for us. And there we go. Now we have our hooks.client.ts, and we are actually initializing our service factory. And what that is doing is if we go back and kind of relook at our code, it is sitting there taking in the, the types that we told it and um, each of the services, and it's looping through them, and it's calling the method start. So something I do want to quickly address that I did notice back in the hooks uh, that client.ts file is that how our imports are coming in. Uh, they have the decorator of this at symbol. And 
that I actually I really don't want us to have that. So and that is coming because at the very beginning of this video I said to go in the Svelte commit and uh, add the alias of this here. So by default Svelte will actually add a decorator to its imports for everything inside the lib folder. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that and it's going to throw some errors here real quick. But if we come back into here, delete that import and then just re-import it. There we go. We'll get the, the dollar sign lib, which is more ideally what we would like to have um, into our files when it comes to um, the imports. Now, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our uh, HTTP client and that will handle the request and will kind of be our middleware um, between our restura and, and the front end for HTTP request. Uh, before we do that, though, we're going to have to install a npm patch, uh, package. It's uh, actually one that we've created, so I'm going to go ahead and open up another terminal. And the package is called, let me just pull her up here. So we're going to do pnpm install, and it's going to be at red sky tech slash core utils. We'll go ahead and install that. Uh, what this is, is... Um, so as we've worked on projects in the past, we've started to build up uh, libraries of code that we just have noticed, hey, we keep it pasting this code in every project we do. So instead of constantly always remembering to paste in the code that we've used in previous projects, we have created an NPM package manager uh, for Red Sky core utilities that we use all over the place. So, um, and we frequently try to keep it up to date and adding new stuff that we find that is nice um, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel every time we start a new project. So. We got that guy up and running. The next step that we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna create a utils folder. So inside, we'll go back here, close this all up. So inside source, inside the lib, we're gonna create an actual file, a folder called utils. So I mean, there's a utils.ts in here, but we're gonna create our own, so folder, utils. Go to enter in there. And inside here, we're gonna create two files. So the first file, http.ts, and then the second one, we're going to go and create file. This, this one's going to be called HTTP client.ts. And then I'm going to go back to the HTTP one here. And this code is boilerplate code. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it in, and then I'm going to talk you through it. But please pause the video to make sure you're able to record and write, type out all the code in there. So I just pasted it on in here. Here we are, we're in the HTTP.ts. So at the very top, we're going to be importing our HTTP.client, which we will set up here in just a second. But let me just talk through it and walk through what's all in here. So at the very top, we have an enum that we created with HTTP status code. Uh, you can see the different ones in here. I don't need to go through each one. You can kind of read them all. Uh, and then as we go down, we create a let variable called base URL, which is a, a string. And then we have an if statement that runs and it's going to say type window not equal to define what we're going to set as our base URL to the actual origin. So if we're actually running on a website and not localhost, it will set it as that origin. Else, what we're going to do is we'll assign base URL to HTTP localhost 5173, which is their default, what our, our uh, code is currently running at. Um, and as we go down, we are going to create a variable called HTTP, and we're going to assign it to new HTTP client. We're going to assign the headers. So this is where we set the default headers for our um, for all of our methods. This is where we'll come in if we needed to add stuff, depending on what, you know, so on and so forth. And then we'll just assign that base URL. And kind of down here, we add these things called interceptors, which I can talk on here in just a second. But uh, at the very end, we just do an export default HTTP. So Going back to these inceptors, uh, as I've said before, we this is this is boilerplate. So this is something that we use in every project, and it kind of varies between project to project. Um, we comment out a lot of code in here. Uh, sometimes it's used, and sometimes it's not. About 80% of the time, right now, we are just kind of deleting it out until we find out what we need um, to use. So that's kind of just what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll just delete this stuff out inside this project in there and then you can see that we have like these different types of responses that we do but i'm just gonna again just delete all this out because all you really need to do for just this quick start here is just add these uh interceptors in and then just return the responses cool so the next step that we're going to do is now we're going to go over to our http client.ts file and again i'm just going to go ahead and paste some boilerplate code in here this is a this is a biggie um, 
we'll just go ahead and scroll all the way up here to the top. There's there's a lot in this one, um, and honestly, I will probably just add it into the uh, a comment below in the video where you can copy this file in the HTTP.ts. That way, you can easily paste this code in. So starting from the top, we are going to actually pull in our Red Sky Tech Core Utils. We have our MISC Utils and our Object Utils. And in here, we're going to export the HTTP client. And what this is doing is we're setting some private variables, config, base URL, API URL. Um, and then we have our request interceptors and our response interceptors, just like we saw on the previous page. We set up our constructor with the config, uh, with the base URL. And inside here, we are assigning a content type application JSON. And for how our restore works, kind of just moving on down, so our base URL, and then just how our restore works is we have um, an API. Almost all of our endpoints go by API forward slash v1, unless it's a different ver version that we're on. Moving on down here is where we'll actually call uh, these add request interceptors or remove interceptors. So again, a lot of boilerplate stuff that we have just used in many projects, but we just don't want to take out of our quick start. So that's why a lot of the times this file comes in here and we paste it in um, because we're you know not using it. But as we get down further here, we're going to kind of see we have our get request in here and talks about how we decorate our uh, get request, our post request, our put our patches, our deletes, so on and so forth. And a lot of this you'll will make sense. We don't really ever touch this file once we've come into or created a new project. Because again, boilerplate is something that we've started in every project. Um, you know, Occasionally we might have to add or remove some stuff depending on the needs of the client. And going on down, yep, we just have our fetch interceptors, some errors that are just kind of thrown on here just because they don't have TypeScripts. And we could fix these just by putting an any in here. Um, if it doesn't like that, unexpected any. And of course, ESLint will not like that. So we'll just we'll just actually leave it here. It's not going to hurt anything with the code. And same with this one. And at the very end, we just ex uh, export the class, the HTTP errors as well, um, which is another one that we use. So here we have our HTTP.ts and our HTTP.client.ts set up. Um, and this will handle our API request to Restura, which is a good segue into getting Restura set up. The first thing that we're going to need to do for setting up Restura is we're going to need to create a restura.config.json. Um, and that will live at the root of our directory here. So let's go to just collapse all the files again. And we're going to create a new file called, oops, that's going to create it there. Let me see if I can collapse all this and click to here, create new file. There we go. This file is going to be called, again, restura.config.json. And this is a config that will change depending on whatever project we're working on. A lot of our other projects, we will the URL is going to change, the auth token is going to change, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but for this test project, we have a backend that is running that you can hit some endpoints on, which we'll be tying together here shortly. Um, and to do that, the first thing that we need to do is to set up this config file. Is I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in here is we're going to create a schema base URL and then an auth token. Um, like I said, this is different from every project that we do. We don't use the auth token one, two, three, four, five. Um, and we have our base URL. And if you've watched our Restore video, this will start to start make sense for you. You'll start to understand what's going on. Um, and this is just how we're implementing the Restore with our front end. Um, in this case, we're just going to have HTTP four slash or colon four slash onboard red sky engineering dot com with an auth token one two three four five. This will help uh, our schema fetch generate um, file that we'll be creating here in a second. They'll know which base URL to go to, and it knows with auth, auth token to use when it gets there. So what we're actually going to do now is at the root of our directory is we're going to create that that script file. So let's go ahead and create a folder. We're going to do new folder, and this one's going to be called scripts. This is where we like to keep our scripts for the projects that we run. Um, but mainly in the front end, this is what we'll do. And inside here, we're going to create a new file, and this is going to be called schema fetch generate.mjs. And then inside here, again, this is going to be another one of our boilerplate uh, files that I'll, I'll link down below. Um, that you can just go ahead and paste on in. There we go. I'm going to paste this in here. And I'm not going to kind of go through this tremendously in great depth. Uh, there's a lot to it. Um, but 
very high level, what you just need to know is that this is reaching out to Restura. This is fetching uh, a request from that side and it's pulling in all your API endpoints. It's pulling in um, your types, your def uh, declarations, your definitions for TypeScript. It, it pulls in everything from your REST so that you can use it directly on the front end. Uh, to be able to run this file, the next thing we're actually going to do is we're going to come down to our package JSON and we are going to create a new script. Let's see up here in our scripts. Let's just go and do a comma and we're going to call, call this generate code. Generate code. And what we're going to do is we're going to say node dot forward slash scripts forward slash schema fetch generate dot mjs. There we go. So this we'll go ahead and call. We can call this when we need to pull in the newest uh, schemas. And you'll actually end up doing this quite a lot as your project builds and keeps as you do stuff in the back end, creating endpoints. Uh, sorry, as you as you're creating endpoints, um, as you're changing definitions and types, you'll end up probably calling this a lot when you need to rerun your project and make sure you're pulling the most recent stuff as you're debugging. But let's go ahead and see if this works properly. And to do that, we're going to come down here. Let me just clear this out. And what we're going to do is type in pnpm run generate code. There it goes. So it went off, it went to our back end, um, and it ran the file, and it took in our restor config folder, and it went off, and it generated. If we come back up here and we go into source, you're going to see this new folder called generated. And what this did is it went off to the restor back end, and it created us an entire api.d.ts file that now we can use these types throughout our project. Um, that way we have, uh, we're syncing with our backend and we are keeping uh, the requests and the APIs exactly the same. And we can use the objects and models uh, throughout our code. And a lot of this stuff is gonna throw some errors and everything, so on and so forth, but this is what that file will do. It will generate all three of these. Now, our next step is going to be to tie everything all together. So we've added a lot of stuff here. We've, you know, we created our service layers. We have set up our HTTP client. We have set up our um, Arrestura. We went out and fetched our, our models. And I think the next thing we really need to do is like, let's let's get a user logged in. Let's, let's go ahead and send a request off to a user and let's get them logged in. Um, so what, what I did here is I went over to shadcn-svelte.com forward slash blocks. They have this section here, and this is where they have a lot of really great, just like pre-generated code examples for you. And one that they have that I, I tend to use a lot of my personal projects, and I scroll it down here, is uh, this one right here, just the simple login page. Um, it's exactly what we need, and we'll go ahead and use something just like this. So what I you can do is you can click on the code, and you can see all the code in here but before we go ahead and just copy and paste it we know that we're going to need to add a couple more components we're going to need to have a card an input and a label we already have the button uh, to do this you can go ahead and say pnpm dlx shad cn svelte and then we're going to say at latest and then we're just going to say add and when we do add, it's going to bring up a, a CLI that we can go ahead and click through and just say, hey, which ones we want to add. So I'm going to go ahead and go down this list. And like I said, we need the card. So if we keep going, going, got calendar cards, we'll push space there. If I keep going down, we'll find input. We'll do that one and then label. And I think that's all we really need right now for this. I mean, there's plenty of other ones. You I mean, you can see you could just download their entire component library. So, yep, just that's all we need. I'll go ahead and push enter. And it's going to ask if we want to install the components. You can see right here, card, input, and label. And it wants to uh, install the components and dependencies. So I'll just push enter. Installing success. So to make sure that actually happened, I'll come back up here to the code. Go inside the lib. Look at the components. There we, do. we have button, card, input, label. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up our, our routes for this. So I'm going to go up here and re-collapse everything down again. And inside source, we're going to go into routes. Uh, there's already some boilerplate code in here that we're going to use. And we'll, we'll end up messing with this in a second. But look, let me show you how we like to set up our 
uh, our routes for projects that require a user to log in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create an auth folder. This will help us like organize our folders a little better. And we'll go ahead and we'll we'll mess with this here in a second. Uh, actually, you know, we'll add that right now. We'll add another folder inside auth. We'll just call it like dashboard. And inside dashboard, we're going to create a file called page.svelte. And then we're going to create a file called plus page.ts. And that's all we're going to do within the auth folder for right now. We're going to go ahead and leave that alone. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go and create inside our auth folder. Let's just go ahead and create a path for login. So we're going to create a folder. We're going to create login. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to create a file called plus page.svelte. There we go. And that's all we should really need to do. So let's go ahead on this page that's felt. We're going to go ahead and copy this entire script over here and let's see if this runs. Hold on in. Looks like no errors right now. Um, we are still running. And if we come over to our running local host and we go to the uh, URL param login, we should just get a basic form. Um, obviously, it looks uh, not very prettied up right now and we we can fix that here in a second so so I actually paused the video there to troubleshoot why the design wasn't looking the way that Chad Cien uh, had it and surprisingly all I had to do is I needed to just refresh the page I just refreshed this page and it worked itself out so not really too much debugging uh, I needed to do so hopefully that was the case for you um, but regardless so Moving forward, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to set up the form here. Um, and what we like to do for uh, our form controllers is we like to use Svelte Kit Superforms and Zod. So we're going to have to install two more dependencies. So we could do pmpm PM install and Svelte, uh, Svelte Kit Superforms. Go ahead and install that. And then we're going to go ahead and same thing, but we're going to do it now with Zod. Awesome. So now if we go to our package.json, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see we got our self kit superforms in here, and then we've got Zod, and these are the versions that uh, of time of recording is currently out. Good. So now that we have these designed, we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a schema file, and inside that is where we're going to create the Zod schema for what we expect for the login. Um, obviously, our form has an email and a password, but how do we know what Restura wants to take in, like what is what is Restore expecting? So a way to figure this out is if we come up to our generated folder, so again, to get there, collapse everything, we go source, generated, api.d.ts. Let's scroll right to the top, API v1, and this can be a user, or actually, sorry, it's gonna be a me. If we scroll on down, we have this login right here. So we have this login endpoint, and then on the request, it takes in a user and a password, and it's expecting a string on both of them. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Um, where we like to keep our schema file is actually going to be inside your source. And inside this, uh, the root level of source is where we're going to go ahead and create schema. So if I just do this and create a schema folder. And then inside here, we like to try to keep our schemas organized. Uh, depending on what page you're using the schema on, uh, we like to have you name it in the same convention uh, for whatever page it's being used on. So that way, when you have to come back to it, we understand where these are at. Um, this can, so for in this example, we're using the login page. We're gonna go ahead and create a new file. And we're just gonna go ahead and call it login.ts. And then inside here, we're gonna go ahead and import Z uh, from Zod. And we're going to go ahead and export const login. Let's look at that um, uh, code. That's it. The code uh, code pilot is helping me out here, but we'll we'll just go ahead and type it longhand. And this is going to equal to z dot object. And inside here, we're going to be taking an email, and that's going to be z dot string dot email. And then the next one is going to be password, and uh, you know we can say minimum eight characters. We just say here in this case three, so that way it does that for us. 
the next step is that we're now going to implement this on our actual login page. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our routes, click that open, go to login, go to page.svelte.ts, and then up inside our script tags here, let's just create some space. I like to make sure we have some good space that we're working with. And we're just going to do uh, const, and we're going to deconstruct the object here in a second. But what we're going to uh, deconstruct from it is we're going to let form errors and then enhance oops looks like we had some copilot added some stuff here so again form errors enhance and this is going to be equal to super form and then inside super form we're going to create defaults and inside defaults we're going to add our zod schema that we just created and that's going to be the login schema and you can kind of see uh, Superforms is actually starting to, as or VS Code is actually in doing the imports for me here, defaults and that. Let's go to the very end and create an empty object. We'll fill that up in a second. Let's make sure we get defaults imported. And then let's also make sure we get Zod imported as well. And const, if I spell const correctly. There we go. And inside here, it's going to be a single page application, SPA, we're going to say is true. And then we are going to do a async method, and it's, we're going to say on update. Let's create this, and we'll create a method called on update. Inside this is going to take a deconstructed form. And then for now, we're just going to go ahead and council log uh, form. The next step that we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to implement the form and the values on our inputs here um, and actually have it work. And let's just get this uh, this guy council logging out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come up here on line 24 in my code is I'm going to create a form. And let's just go ahead and wrap all the way down to our button. Let's just wrap past that footer. We'll just go ahead and put a form in there. And this is going to be a method, oops, sorry, let me move my cursor, method equals to post. And then we're going to say use enhance for it. And then the next thing that we're going to end up doing is on our input here, we're actually going to pass in that value. So let's just... Uh, we don't actually need these IDs, um, but we'll, we'll keep them for now. But we're going to say value. We're going to do bind value, and we're going to set this equal to the reactive variable form dot email. Thank you, TypeScript, for that wonderful helping out there. And we'll come down to our uh, password. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say bind value equals to dollar sign form dot uh, password. There we go. Uh, the last thing we'll have to do is actually uh, make this button of type submit. And that's what we'll do is just type equals submit. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and just see if this works. So what we should be able to do is type in an email and a password, and then we'll go ahead and push enter. I'll, and we'll see what council logs out. So we'll come back over here. Pull this guy open. Let's uh, just open up my council so we can see everything. We're going to say like Alex at test.com or we can just even red red sky and we're going to just say test and i'll hit enter or sign in obviously it cleared the form after we're done there but pushing enter we got actually a council log out here we can see our data was email was alex at red sky tech.io and our password is test perfect looks like everything is working now that we got the login form working, we got the data council logging out, we can actually see it up here. I think it's time for us to actually create a um, login API. So uh, on our onboarding restore, we already have created the an endpoint for logging in. So like again, this video is not showing how to go and create those endpoints for Restura. We actually already have it pulled in from pre-generated code from this generated, this API request.ts folder. Um, it's already in there. So, but what we do need to do is we do need to uh, actually create a method inside our service. So to do that, let's go ahead and collapse everything up here. And then we're going to go into source. Let's go back into lib and we're going to go down to our services and go to user, back into our user services here. 
and we are going to create an asynchronous method. We're going to call it login user by password. And this is going to take two, two arguments. It's going to take a username, and this is going to be a string. And we're also going to do a password, and this is also going to be a string. And this method then now will go ahead, and we're going to say await. Oh, API request v1. You can see uh, Copilot's doing a great job helping us with this. And this method is going to be the post user login. And it's going to take two values. So we got a lot of little errors and squigglies going on here. What we're going to do is we're just going to pass on through username. And then for our password, we're not just going to pass a straight password back. What we actually do is we want to SHA-256 encode it. And we have actually written our own utility of how we end up encoding our our, um, our passwords. And what we'll do here is we're just going to say await misc utils dot SHA-256 encode. And then we're going to say password. So now we have a API request that we're going to be sending off for our post user login. This is one of our methods. If you actually go inside the generated and then the API request.ts, you'll see this method. You'll see that it needs to take a username and it needs to take a password. Um, so this is how we can create a login user by password. So to implement this, the next step what we need to do is go back to our, uh, our routes folder. Let's just collapse this back up and go back to source, go back to routes, let's go back to login, we'll go to page, login here, and let's actually start to implement this. Um, what we'll end up doing here is we're going to do a try catch, because uh, we would like to handle errors on the front end, um, that way we can provide a toast message if, if the login failed, um, so on and so forth. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then what we need to do is actually we need to bring in our user service. So to do that, we're going to say const user service is going to be uh, equal to service uh, factory dot get. And then it's user service. And let's go ahead and import this. Import that. Do, do. Yep. So now that we have our user service, we can actually call that endpoint that we had. And we are just going to go here and say, um, let's just say const user is going to be equal to await user service dot. And then what we called it, the login by password there. And you can see that code names is actually doing a pretty good job at like suggesting how to do it. But I just know it's actually a little wrong here. So what we're going to say is form dot data dot email. And then it's going to say form.data.password. Great. And then what we'll do is once we get this user back, is we're just going to go ahead and say console.log user. Let me just go ahead and do, do some prettier, make this look a little better. Let me actually let me go ahead and just close this so we can have more code and we can see everything going on here. User password, yep, looking good. And then we're just gonna cancel uh, council error. We're not gonna throw a toast message for right now. Now, there are just two more things that I forgot to have us uh, add to our project. Um, well, first things first is that we actually need to go to this login user here and we're actually doing nothing with this. Um, and you'll see in a sec why we, we don't return this. Um, but for the, for the sake of our council log, let's just go ahead and say return. Uh, so that way you can see what data we're end up getting back from this request. Um, and then the next one that we need to do is we actually have to go into our Vite config. Uh, inside our Vite config, we are going to be, we have to proxy the server that this is going to. Uh, we have to tell Vite config, hey, when you're hit, uh, when a, a URL is going to forward slash API, we need it to hit, uh, we need it to change our, our, um, our URL so that way we're actually hitting the correct data. So to do that, we're going to add a server in here, and then we're going to say proxy. And inside proxy, we're going to say anything that's API or starts with API, we want this to hit the same website that we had for our rester. So it's going to be HTTP S colon forward, forward, forward slash forward slash on board board dot red sky eng dot com. 
there we go. So now we got our proxy all set up and good to go. We have our, if we go back to our user service, we have our login returning uh, the object that's going to be coming back for this. So I say, let's give this a shot. Um, let me go back to our login page. Here we go. So then we, uh, here we go. Um, we have a user that we have pre-made that's just a fake user that we can use to log in just to test to see what, uh, what ends up coming back. So this user is test at redskyeng.com and the password is test123. So I'm going to go and push enter and there we go. We actually got a response. So if we come up here and go and go to our network, we can see that we sent out a response or request to the localhost API v1 user login. It actually proxied it and sent it to um, the correct backend. And then on our response, we, we got our data uh, with token, uh, token expiration, and refresh token. So what we're actually doing is uh, when we send a response back, we send a, we're sending cookies to the browser and we're actually applying those cookies to the browser for our users. Um, this is how we work with a lot of our projects is we're using cookies. So if we actually come into the application, go down to storage and we can see cookies. If I just expand this here, you're going to see that we have two cookies. We have a refresh one and then we have our token. Um, and now let's just kind of show you how we end up making this work now to where this will navigate us to the off page when logged in and with the user. So to do this, what we're going to go ahead and do, let's, let's just recollapse everything up here. We're going to clean up some of our files in here. So let's go back to our source. Let's go back to our routes. Let's go to our auth dashboard page. Let's go to page.svelte. And so we will know when we hit this page, when we, we'll just do an H1 here and we'll say hello world. Um, that will go ahead and hit, you know, we'll know when, when we get there, when we get to our dashboard, when we see hello world. And we honestly, we don't need this page.ts for this project right now. So we just go ahead and just delete this one. And let's go and clean up our plus layout.svelte file. So because we are using uh, Svelte 5, we can use the new way that we were supposed to bring in um, children. So we no longer use slot. We actually use this, we'll say let children colon. And this is going to be equal to children.snippet. This could be equals to dollar sign props. There we go. And then we'll have to go ahead and import snippet here from Svelte. So that will take care of that. I don't know why. Let's see. Why is that yelling at it? Should be fine. Type snippet. Let children. Oh, it just might be mad. It's uh, not beating you. So what we can do is just come down here and say at, at render children there. There we go. And I don't know why this guy is frustrated. Import type decorations can only be used. Oh, that's why. Because we have to say lang equals ts. Perfect. Let's just prettier that up and make it look good. All right, so that's the first step. The next step is that we need to handle um, handle what we do with the user when they first hit our page. And based on the life cycles felt, I, I'm not going to go into that. This video is already long enough. But what we're going to have to do is we need to create a plus layout.ts. So we're going to actually get rid of this page that's felt here, the one with the button on it. And I'm just going to go and delete this. And inside here, we're going to create a new file. Oops, not folder. A new file. And we're going to call it plus layout.ts. So this will handle the logic when a user first hits, hits our page. So to start with this, we're going to create a const. And we're going to say unpro, unprotected routes. That's going to equal to an array. And inside here is where you can put your unprotected routes. Um, we're just going to go ahead and say an empty string. We're going to say the forward slash. And then we're also just going to go ahead and say login. And that's all we'll need to do for right now. And it's just bad that it's not being used. So and then down here, we're going to create a function is unprotected route. And this is going to take a path name, which is a string. And inside the function, we're going to return a Boolean actually. So Boolean value. Um, 
function is unprotected route. Again, it's just saying as defined but never used. Uh, we're going to say for const route of unprotected routes. We're going to do that. We'll loop through them. Const route, and we're going to say if route dot ends with star and path name dot starts with, and we're going to go ahead and do a slice. Yep, this is exactly what we want to do, and we're going to say return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Let's go ahead and do that in here. So actually, this guy needs to come outside of that for loop and return false, so that will make it happy. So let's clean that up. And now we are going to initiate our load method. So export const load. And we're going to say layout load equals async. Um, and we'll call this event down here. And we'll go ahead and import layout load from types. And then in here, we are, so there's a couple things that we'll have to do. We, first thing we're is we have to create a store for our user. And then we're also going to create another method that is going to say get user me. And that's going to use the token that we have just recently gotten. So to do that, we are going to go and let's recollapse our files here. So it's easier to see where we're going. Inside the script file, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder called stores. So let's just add new folder, stores. And inside stores, we're going to create a file, and we're going to call this file user.ts. Inside here, we're going to do an export const user store. store and that's going to be equal to writable. writable. And then we got to give it a type of uh, definition. But first, let's go ahead and import that. We're going to say it's api.v1.user.me.get.request. Sorry, response. It's a response that we want, or undefined. And then we're going to default this to undefined. So now we got our user store that we'll be able to set and use globally throughout our entire project once our user is logged in. So the next step that we're going to end up doing is we're going to go back to our, let's go to our routes and go back to that plus layout.ts. Uh, um, one thing I do want to quickly address is I kind of forgot to, I, I didn't finish this one out. So we do want to return true here. So let's return true. But then we also want to say, yeah, if route is equal to the path name, return true as well. And then let's go back down to our load method here. This load method, we are going to now say let user equals get user store. And we are going to do an if check, if no user. We're going to do a, uh, we're actually going to go off and try to get the user if we have our cookies, but we should wrap this now into try catch. Oh my goodness. Try catch error. There we go. But we're actually just going to silently, um, we're just going to silently fail here because we know. Um, so we can just say, say silently silent error. And here we're to say user is going to be equal to API. It's pretty much getting it right away for me there. It's just a little off, but it's going to be the uh, API request v1 dot get user me. And then once we do get that user, we're going to go ahead and set it uh, set it here. Uh, as I said, we're going to silently fail if we don't have a user because what we'll do is we'll handle this underneath it here. So we're going to have two. We're going to have an if else statement. So we're going to say if user and is unprotected route and we're going to pass in the the path name that we currently have so it's going to be event dot url dot path name if it is uh, if we have a user and is an unprotected route we are going to go ahead and tell and redirect the person to redirect we're going to give it a 302 error, uh, 302 code and we're going to say dashboard else 
if we don't have a user and it is not uh, an unprotected route, so this returns false, so look at that, we're going to redirect them to the login page. Uh, one thing that we do need to make sure we do here is we need to return, return user. So we're saying um, if user and is unprotected route, we're going to say event.url path name redirect 302 to dashboard. Else if no user and is not a unprotected route, event URL dot path name, we're going to redirect to 302 and login. And the last thing that we need to do for this page is because this is a, sing, uh, a single page application, at the very top we have to do this export const pre render equals true. And then we're going to export const SSR equals true. So now that that is all done, one thing that we can see here is that, um, so the other thing here is like uh, we're kind of getting this error for user stores. One thing that we can do to help really clean up that is inside our Svelte config, we go down here and underneath uh, aliases that we created here, we can create a new alias and we're going to say dollar sign stores colon because we're going to end up using this a lot and it's going to say path path dot resolve and we're going to say src stores so oops uh, path and we'll have to import path so at the very top here we'll just say import path from path Perfect. So if we come back to our layout.ts, it's all happy, it knows where it's at, but something that we can actually do is uh, we can just rename this to dollar sign stores. Um, make sure we get that other, oh, dollar sign stores. Perfect. So now uh, when we have our users logged in, if we have a user logged in, we're going to redirect them to the dashboard. If they're not logged in, we're going to redirect them to login. So to kind of really test this out to make sure that this is working, you can see that we're on our dashboard page because we have our cookies here. I'm going to actually just clear out our cookies and I'm going to refresh the page. So now you can see we are back in on the login page and let's just go ahead and just try logging in our user again. So it's going to be test at red sky ENG. Oops. Red sky ENG .com with the password is test one, two, three. So if I log us in, there we are. It's asking to save password and we have now gotten to hello world. And if we refresh the page, it should bring us right back to this thing. Hang on, it looks like we got an infinite loop. Let me see what I did here. Oh, server-side render. This needs to be actually set to false. Not not true. That should fix it. There we go. Yep, I over missed that one there. So if we say refresh, there we go. So it just brings us right back to the dashboard. Let's take a moment now to step back and review everything we've accomplished so far. We kick things off by starting a new project from scratch using the Shad CN component library and Svelte. Next, we followed Red Sky's approach to create a service layer and build a user login API. Then we use Shad CN blocks to build a simple user login page. We implemented Svelte Kit Superforms and Zod to handle validation for the login form. After that, we connected our new front end project to the Restura Quick Start server. And then finally, we brought everything together to log in a user using authentication tokens and cookies. Thank you for following along with this video and I hope that this has helped give you a better understanding of how Red Sky uh, starts our projects. Until next time, thank you.